Hey, welcome back everyone to theCUBE coverage of AWS reInvent 2021. I'm Jeff, your host. We're here with two sets with live content, pumping out 120 years over the course of a couple of days, 28 hours of programming from the people making things happen, sharing the news and the insight. We got Sandy Carter, worldwide public sector vice president of partners and programs for Amazon Web Services. Sandy Cube alumni, welcome back to theCUBE. Great to see you. Great to see you too, John. It's so awesome to be here in person, right? The news is coming more and more. <laughs> we got healthcare news, we got this news, we got all kinds of certification. Yep. We just recently talked on a segment about all the great stuff on certifications, but healthcare is booming. Okay, we got talking about delivering the kind of performance that people need in healthcare with data, and you got delivery, destination is healthcare. There Let's you go. talk healthcare, what's going on? Yeah, so we made a couple of really awesome announcements around healthcare today. So if you think about it, one of the big trends in healthcare is digitizing health records, so electronic healthcare records to really help and assist with patient care. So because that is so big, we launched an initiative for electronic healthcare records migration assistance. And what that means is that we have now added technical subject matter experts, and industry subject matter experts in the healthcare space who understand EHR, electronic health records, to help us migrate at least 500 ISV applications over to AWS. This is really big news because so far, most of those applications are running on premises. So getting them over to the cloud gives them the scalability, gives them the agility that they need to provide all of us better healthcare. Well, one of the big themes is the epic uh, performance, the database on uh, the cloud. Cloud has given so much agility and has changed the game. I mean, I'm, I'm old enough to remember, I mean, we can look back on the, the shifts in technology. You had that era of healthcare where data and the records were super important, privacy, lock it down, don't talk to each other, we're going to respect the privacy of the individuals. That's all now changed with horizontal scalable data, as Swami pointed out, who's the SVP leader of AI and the data for AWS, whole new paradigm of data architecture. This is disrupting healthcare. Yes. And you got the Epic situation. Take us through what's, why is that, why is this important? Why are we talking about Epic? Well, so uh, EHR is one of the announcements, and then the second big announcement is our Epic on AWS announcement. So, you may have covered this. Back in the August, September timeframe, we announced a new EC2 instance called the M6i. And uh, Epic, which is one of the leading global healthcare providers in the world, um, has been migrated to the cloud. And so they started testing themselves. Epic started testing on the M6i. And so what we saw is a 40% performance improvement. Now that is, that is huge. As well as a 30% reduction in total cost of ownership. So if you're a partner out there, you're going to see as your application runs on top of Epic, you're going to get that performance gain. And Epic has an amazing ecosystem, uh, John, they have what they call the co-travelers. They kind of exist on yeah. Epic, because everybody uses Epic. Those ISVs are now going to get that benefit in yeah. 90% of the current Epic customers. And then our consulting partners are also going to see the benefit because of that total cost of ownership reduction of 30%. Yeah. So imagine you're a consulting partner, you're now going to go into a hospital that's using Epic and tell them that you can reduce their total cost of ownership by 30%. That's yeah. amazing. Well, no, well, first of all, the cost thing is amazing, but also, when you mentioned the instances, what's happening with the Graviton and the processors and the performance you're getting in the cloud now, if the applications are running faster, and lower cost. Yeah. So, you know, databases there really want the most horsepower. Yeah. So you got the cloud performance, you got the lower cost, why wouldn't anyone want to run it anywhere else? This is what I'm saying on my story I wrote Sunday night. All the modern applications will go to the best performance. That's Even right. legacy apps. That's right. And I think this is so important because, you know, you need performance, you need speed, you need to get the rest of this application migrated over. That's why we've got the EHR migration initiative. And then if you couple that with our third announcement around authority to operate, that now gets you that security and compliance, right? Because if you're a hospital, you can't risk having that patient information exposed. Yep. And so we introduced as an authority to operate a program that enables our partners to get HIPAA and high trust authorization faster, cheaper, 
so that they can move with this new digital trend that's happening all across healthcare. I mean, it is our fastest growing area today, growing yeah, 105%. Yeah, exactly. it's, 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 it points again, there's another one of those areas that is urgent under, under the COVID, it's exploding because of the demand just on performance. And Swami said it today also in the keynote, the, the AI data keynote, governance should be an enabler, not an inhibitor. That's so right. when you start getting into governance, where you can start managing the data in a way that's cool for people to use the data, but protect the privacy, you then can have the modern apps. So, and if I could just add on one thing there. Today we talked about, you know, when you go on your digital transformation journey, it requires digital security, especially in healthcare. And so as you have those requirements, you have to be able to not just get stuff to the cloud, it's got to be secure. And yeah. that's why HIPAA and High Trust exist today. And these fine-grained controls now available are amazing. So again, I love what, the way you guys are going in this direction with AWS. I got to say every year it's like, wow, well, again. But I want to get back to this ISV angle because I think yeah. this is super important. Again, I tease this out on my post Sunday night when I, after my sit down with Adam Slepsky was that if you have, if I'm a, 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 a software vendor, an independent ISV, independent software vendor, or a software owner, I want my app to run faster, period. Yeah. Okay, I want my app to make money, which means valued by customers. Yeah. I, want, I don't want my app to be slower and not be seen in front of my customers. So yeah. again, ISV is now an opportunity. The Epic is a shining example of that where yeah. now as an ISV, I can innovate and not have to do the heavy lifting. This is a huge point. Can you just share some color on this? Because this is like, I think, kind of the elephant in the room. The yeah, ISVs are going to go where the action is. That's right. And you know, the Epic ecosystem is such a force. Epic being a global healthcare leader getting that performance level, all of those, co they call them co-travelers that exist around Epic. All of those applications can now take advantage of that performance improvement, which for me is a game changer <clears throat> because all that data, I mean, I know that, you know, I was just in a, an emergency room with my daughter. She had a trouble, we thought she broke her elbow. And you know, we were sitting there waiting as the person's entering and waiting and entering and waiting. So that performance really makes a difference, right? Yeah. In your customer satisfaction, in your patient care, yeah. all the things that really matter, the business outcome areas, yeah. not just the technology side. It's a game changer for well, it's, healthcare. It's, it's the delivery of one, your health, your life, and yeah. two, hassle time. Avoiding the steps, waiting in the wrong room, going here, waiting for this, getting a test you don't need. That's right. It's a hassle for the customer, but also puts pressure on the supply chain, the operational bandwidth, and with telemedicine around the corner, um, you know, everything is happening with telemedicine. Why I might not need to go to the hospital, I don't have to. So again, another big wave coming is telemedicine. Yeah, that's right. And in fact, we launched that healthcare uh, startup accelerator where we invited healthcare companies from around the world to come in and get extra support as a brand new partner, as a next gen partner. And that was actually one of the top areas of focus. About 40% of the companies came in around telemedicine. Uh, and one of the really interesting uh, partners that came in through that accelerator was a partner named GitLab. They do uh, you know, surgeon training, which is quite <laughs> fascinating. And, uh, and they were doing that, and Time named them one of the top most innovative companies of the year in 2021. Um, and they accredited a lot of their success to the healthcare accelerator that we just launched as well. So much action going on. I got to get your thoughts on just in general uh, healthcare. Do you find the vibe to be more from the doctors and the service providers? Because they're the ones on the front lines. They're in the foxhole, so to speak. They, it always seems to me that they always wish it went, things went faster. Similar to government workers, right? It's like, I wish there wasn't red tape. I wish it was easier. Why aren't we doing this? That seems to have been like the culture. And now it's shifting back to, all right, now we're having fun. We're delivering care. We're riding the right wave. I agree. You know, these business outcomes make a huge difference, I think. And I think that, that that transformation that you're talking about is occurring much faster than anybody anticipated. I predict in 2022, you're going to see this increased focus, not just on telemedicine, patient care overall. Like how do you combine the two together? How are you able to move quicker to provide more diagnostics? So for example, one of our partners, GE Healthcare, 
was using AI and ML with one of our um, partner programs and was able to automate the radiology workflow. I mean, just think about radiology, reading x-rays, how fast that can be with AI and ML. It, re it increased the diagnostic accuracy by 30%. I think you're going to see lots more use of technology to speed up diagnosis, to increase that customer yeah. part patient care. I think that's really going to be the trend in 2022, and, and, and it's great for all of us. And computer vision, by the way, with explainable AI can come in, talk about analyzing x-rays yep. and or film, more and more tech coming in. Absolutely. And machine learning is driving a lot of it. I completely agree. Machine learning, um, I would say machine learning and analytics. You know, Now that we've got the data, and you know, the data, IDC says that data coming in from IOT sensors increased by 4X since COVID. So imagine, you know, there are now robots working in the hospital gathering your readings of your, you know, how, how strong you breathe, your temperature, all your vital signs are now coming in from IOT sensors. So you're just seeing this explosion of data in healthcare, which only makes diagnosis and hopefully cures, new vaccines, more possible, because now you've got more data to work with, right? That data accuracy is going up, data sources are going up. It's just a really powerful combination. Yeah, healthcare is great. It's been an amazing run on the healthcare side. It's continuing to change in a good way how care is managed and delivered and, and dispensed and, and cost savings. I do want to ask you if you could point out to, to the audience, just from within the partner base, what's the big, trend there because obviously they're all engaged, seeing all kinds of new things. Where's the innovation vibe? What's, what are some, what's the pattern in the partners? More software development, more cloud, more AI? What's the, what would you, how would you rank the, the activities of innovation? Yeah, I would say there are five prime drivers today on the technology side. Um, you know, first and foremost right now is IoT, believe it or not. Um, and IoT because it's driving so much data. And you have to have data for the second big trend, which is artificial intelligence and machine learning. So that data is essential for feeding all the modeling that's going on. Um, we're also seeing the edge come to pass really fast, right? A lot of work on Outpost. In fact, at the conference we announced that we just opened an Outpost Innovation Center with uh, WWT and Intel in DC. We already have an innovation center for Outpost in Seattle. So we opened one in DC for our partner community as well. So we're seeing a lot of focus on, on uh, that edge. Containers, as we talked about earlier, 60% of customers want containers, so our partners to be, need to be all over it. And then another huge trend in public sector is blockchain. So if you think about uh, you know, Panama, El Salvador, um, Ukraine, they're all moving to Bitcoin. And I just went over to the Wynn Hotel because we're here in Vegas. Did you see how many vendors are taking Bitcoin now? It's amazing. And so all of that is built on blockchain. So we also introduced a set of workshops and POCs with our partners around blockchain because we see it happening in states, in countries, and then the countries drive everything else to have to use or, or leverage that chain for Bitcoin. Great trends, the tailwind, the wave is here. It's a big wave. Healthcare, public sector, a lot of change. Cindy Carter, thank you for the great commentary. Great insight, great to see you. Thank Thanks you. for coming nice back to see on theCUBE. Yeah. This is theCUBE coverage. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. We've got two sets, wall to wall coverage here in person, live event as well as hybrid. We have the software as well. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in global tech coverage. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching.